But yeah, so let's just hop in the top 10. This was a, yeah, a really tough one because usually when I say like I get stuck at, you know, 15, 20 songs, it's hard for me. And Kevin's like, I could barely get to 10. Yeah. This one, both both yeah. of us were like. I legitimately I, did have to struggle with this list. Yeah. And I was very surprised because in my own douchebag brain, I'm like, yeah, it all used to sucks. Fuck them. I bet I can find 10 songs. Yeah. It would be difficult. <laughs> no, there was, I was, I got to about 15 and I was like, you know. I like a lot of these songs yeah. pretty equally, and I do like them a lot. It was, yeah, it was really hard to cut down. So, obviously, if you hear this and you're like, why didn't you include this song? Honestly, it was probably on our top 15. It was maybe probably 20. our. Well, because we did consider it. Even probably. our. Uh, the final top 10 before we obviously get into it is only three songs on it were on both of our top 10 lists. Only th- so there are f- once again, it's okay to be wrong, Steve. <laughs> so there are a lot of songs that were left off the list entirely because, yeah, like we had so many to choose from. But anyway, um, number 10, even if I wanted to. A thing you're going to notice is that the majority of these songs are from his first two albums. Yes. Because even though, like we said, we like three through whatever, uh, the first two are the best. Oh, for sure. By far. Relentless and uh, self-titled. Self-titled. They're both phenomenal. But even if I want to... like I like to say, Relentless and Polka Dot Shirt. (laughs) (laughs) With really short goatee (laughs) looking a lot younger. Yes. Um, Yeah. And the uh, hat looks... Just obscenely large on his head, and I feel like he's got Does a big he still old. Have the same hat. I on feel like one? he's got a big old melon head, so he's got to have a fucking huge hat <laughs> to make his head look small. Huge. He's he's got the, huge. the biggest head. It's fucking huge, man. Huge. The the biggest in the world. Huge. Huge. Um. Anyway, even if I wanted to, <laughs> uh, I just so I guess we could just say that which list they're from. So this is from my list, and it was uh I just fucking love this song because it's like about kind of giving up on a relationship it's like i can't even if i wanted yeah. to like it's just everything's going to shit and he's just like i'm just not i can't turn my back on it yep. even if i wanted to because you mean too much and all that kind of shit and actually a lot of the songs you're going to realize on this list are just i fucked up but you stick around and yeah he, it kind he of has a lot of, of <laughs> he has a lot of self-deprecating type songs and I do really like those because, you know, you, you take the songs that you can relate to in certain ways. Mm-hmm. And he does have a lot of songs from that perspective that I feel like are well written. Yeah. But yeah, so even if I want to is great. Um, yeah. Number nine, I Ain't Ready to Quit. Don't start thinking I'm gonna stop Giving it all I got If you think you've seen love You ain't seen nothing yet How could I Your list. Yeah, it, on. this one is is great because it's it's I mean, shit. It's basically the same song about how uh, I'm not ready to quit. I mean, it's not the losing the relationship yeah. and whatever, but it's like I can tell that I'm not ready to quit being with you because of whatever, whatever, whatever. But he uses all these different things. We talks about smoking a cigarette, and when the nicotine rush hits him, he's like, that tells me I'm not ready to quit. Yeah. And he talks about things like that, but then he talks about this lady that he's with, and he says, the way that you do, blah, 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 tells me that I ain't ready to quit. It's yeah. just a nice love song. And yeah. just, But also kind of on that, using the, the theme of quitting, I feel like kind of says a, more about the character of the person. So I just kind of like yeah. that. This one was from My uh, Kind of Party, right? Uh, I believe. I don't remember. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't <laughs> literally tell you. any of these. Um, couldn't tell. You. But yeah, number eight, grown woman. Heart. It's only my poor heart. Just that little thing you tore apart. It ain't no headline. Oh, 
Yeah. This is one of those that I just it was originally titled the Little Girl, and you're like, wow. <laughs> but no, I just I love it because it's one of those of, um, like this girl destroys his heart, and he's just like, no grown woman should act ever act like that. So it's like him talking about like I want to go back to when you were a kid and teach you like don't do this in the mm. future, and it's like you treat me like a lipstick that you're just kind of sick of the shade. You want a new one. You treat me like a dish rag that's gotten dirty, and you throw it away for a new one. And it's just like no grown woman should act like this. You're acting like a little kid the way you're treating people's emotions and stuff like that. And I just yeah, I love this song. Um, anything to add to that one, Kevin? I don't actually like this song. <laughs> That's fine because I don't really like this next song. Number well, seven, fuck you twice. Water Tower. Water Tower. It sure is good to see you. I've been away for way too long. Water Tower. Like a lighthouse in a storm. You help me find. Uh, you wouldn't understand. In the country, we have these things called water towers. There are three in Batavia. <laughs> we have them in the country. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> There's literally one across the street from my high school. The reason I don't like this song is because my senior year of high school, that water tower was new, and they wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> because... you, you, you don't get it. I <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget there was just this stupid like drum line that they do at every football game where it's just like dun, 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 water tower and I was just like what <laughs> okay well I went to a high school that wasn't retarded so we did not have the drum beat and I we, went to my school we also had a water tower at our high school and we weren't just like would you look at this big fucking thing that stupid but he met her bring it up every single day. but yeah this isn't this is genuinely a song that wouldn't have made my top 25 even but i do like the message of it of how it's just like that's the sign you're in your hometown yeah. you walk in you drive in you see that yeah, i love there. it because this song is off of night train and it was when i was at college and so yeah. The song talking about when you know your home and the things about your hometown and like being a beacon, like a fucking lighthouse in a storm, you know, finding your way back home. When I go home from college, you know, I would be driving down the road and I would see the fucking water tower and I'd be like, oh, there's, that's the one, that's how I know I'm home. And then that feeling when you get home and you're just like, you feel like you're home. And that's what did it for me. Yeah. And we didn't constantly bring up the water tower that was outside of our high school. Oh, we were very proud. We had it the whole time. Like, big, what are we supposed to do? Had a big bulldog on it and they shined the light on it. We were very proud of it. <laughs> um, anyway, number <laughs> six, <laughs> laughed until we cried. We all started yelling when we smelled the beach Couldn't wait to try our fake IDs We only had a few days And a whole lot of memories to make Oh man, we were living Didn't waste one minute We talked and drank and danced and said goodbye We laughed until we cried uh, this is just, I like it because it's not like a, it's, it's one of those double meaning songs where yeah. it's like they laughed until they cried because they laughed so hard, but they also laughed until they cried because it ended. Yeah. And so it was like, it starts off with spring break. They want to, apparently some schools go to beaches and stuff for their like senior trips, which we didn't have a senior trip, so. I don't know what that means. Uh, well, we all had spring break because... I know, but they talk all... about like their senior trip, which I, I don't well, know. Well, he grew up in Georgia. Yeah. In Macon, Georgia. Panama City's not that close. Macon is on the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. They probably went 35 minutes away. That's like, true. Oh, yeah. but also, yeah, did he write this? I don't know. Prob- probably not. Someone who probably know. did go on a trip wrote this, and he was just like, I have seen the ocean. I will sing it. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I I dig it for the same reason. Uh, I like songs that are written like that, where it has meaning beyond the first meaning, and it, and it kind of evolves throughout the song. About... It was written by two women, actually. Ashley Gorley and Kelly Loveless. See? No, and that, that's why you know it's well done. Because yeah. he didn't touch it. Because yeah. no. women wrote it. And women are great yeah. songwriters. Um, but yeah, no, I, I just, I dig that whole that whole theme of, you know, they laughed until they cried because they were having so much fun. It was a great memory. He but then we laughed until we cried. 
because we were sad and we were saying goodbye and the, you know, the, yeah. the end of an era kind of thing. And then it goes with his grandpa who yep. all sat on the porch on Christmas and we told stories and we laughed yep. and cried. And then the, finally it was uh, we were trying to get pregnant and then I, you told me the news when we were in the kitchen and we were so happy that we laughed until we yep. cried and all that. And Yeah, it was – yeah, I, I, love, I do love that song. Um, number five, she loved me. Those lines that we were crossing, carelessly tossing caution to the wind. We're wearing thin. We were living for the minute, loving every second of it, fearless, wild and free. Nothing could stop us, but one day time. Also from the first album, as I said, my favorite one, uh, this is just a song about kind of looking back on that kind of high school relationship, and it was just like, we took it really fast, it was, a, you know, kind of one of those hard flames that burn out too quickly kind of thing, and it was, we did all this stuff, and even, but it was not before she loved me, so it was all this just kind of, just a good relationship, kind of looking back on a broken relationship that didn't last, and honestly, I not you know be too personal about it. this song like i said the girl in high school showed me jason aldean back when i was first kind of discovering country and i just remember listening to the song when we were driving through batavia one time and it just kind of stuck with me that way and it always uh yeah so that song always reminds me of her even though obviously she's not in my life anymore mostly because she's dead but uh that'll do it <laughs> that'll do it but yeah so she uh it just always kind of reminds me of that and so i have the kind of good nostalgia of this song but i also just love the message of yeah, it was just this kind of broken relationship and just looking back on yeah. it. Um, but number four, one Kevin was really mad, wasn't on my top ten, is The Truth. I tell him I'm out on the West Coast where it don't ever rain And that I'm probably doing fine Just don't tell him I've gone crazy Can you not have this on your top ten? It is it undeniably it. a top five song. It is barely missed. It. Top five for sure. I like a lot of his songs, and this one is one I listen to. It's less okay than to be wrong. <laughs> if I didn't include the ones from the newer albums, it would have probably have peaked at nine. But um, wrong, 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 wrong. Yeah, this song's great. It's. I mean, he's talking to. I don't know. He's talking to someone who's asking about how he's doing because he's been gone or missing or whatever the fuck yeah. i always took it as he was actually saying it to his ex as to that's why it's like oh yeah is that yeah, yeah you know because he says over you yeah no he's talking to, to yeah. the ex and like checking up on him to see if he's okay and he's just like tell them all of these things tell them yeah, i'm doing tell them fine. i'm blowing my money in some yeah tell i'm just place. having the time of my life i'm doing great nothing's wrong but just don't tell him the truth, and then he goes into the fact that the truth is that he's a wreck. He's not over her. Yeah. Everything sucks. Yeah. And so, but he's just like, just for me, like if you ever loved me, just lie to our friends and family yeah. or whatever. Just tell them that I'm doing fine because I don't want to hurt them and and that you know, make he doesn't. It worse. You don't want them to be worrying about him. It's just exactly. like I need to be alone. I need to do this, and it's just like so. Just tell them I'm fine. Don't tell them the truth. Yeah. No and, emotion whatsoever. Definitely shouldn't be on the top ten. Yeah, fuck this song. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> but number three is uh, – the top three are songs that we both had on both our lists because these are all fantastic songs. Number three is Don't Give Up On Me. Lord knows there's a lot I need to change. And I want to. Baby, you make me want to. No good reason. 
This is a song he wrote to his ex-wife. <laughs> he totally didn't cheat on her. Yeah. Um, but the song is uh, <laughs> pretty much like, I know I'm a huge fuck up. And I will cheat on you. And, <laughs> but don't give and up. And I will divorce you. Uh, <laughs> and I will remarry. <laughs> but please don't give up on me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. it is a great song, though. It, it, for With absolutely no context about how his personal life goes down, it is a very well done song. You know, very self-deprecating, but... Just oh, talking about how she's always there for him to to make things all right. Yeah, uh, this is the song that I was thinking of. It has my my favorite lyric by uh, of Jason Aldean songs. I don't know if you wrote this one, but it has the uh, the line "I've smoked my last cigarette at least a hundred times." I yeah. bet, and it's just I love that of he and then he goes, "I guess I'll just keep quitting until it sticks." And yep. I just love that lyric of he's just like. I'm trying to do better. I'm I'm fucking it up a lot, but I'm gonna yeah. keep trying it until it finally goes through. And that's so he goes. But all the things I failed to do, I never failed at loving you. And it's just a nice kind of sentiment yep. of that. And yeah, I really, really do like this one. Um, and he will cheat on her. <laughs> Spoilers for the Eldine family history. <laughs> if you if you weren't in that uh, little clusterfuck of. Uh, yeah, nonsense back in the day. Then, yeah, that uh, that happened. <laughs> um, what album is that song from? It is from one of the first several. Mm-hmm. I have no fucking clue other than that. Is it from Wide Open? I'm trying to find it because I want to know who wrote it. Don't give up on me, Brett James and Troy Verges. Verges, Verges, Verges. Oh, Lee Bryce wrote uh, uh, the uh, Not Every Man Lives. He's written some good songs. Um, yeah. Anyway, number... If you could just, like, not say them, then it would be great. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> number two is Back in This Cigarette. Counting regrets, fighting back tears, retracing steps. this song this is by far my favorite album. like when we were making the list this is the only one i had on my top 10 right away because i knew it was going to be number one and i just love this song and it's just talking about like how he's living in a motel just living like shit because and but trying to take get this girl back is like trying to put smoke back in a cigarette yeah, trying to do an impossible thing yeah he cannot he cannot do it and and his his current situation is so shitty because of what's happening and he yeah. can't he can't really like do anything about it. Yeah, and Jason Aldean's voice is good recorded uh live not as Yeah. Much. Um but th- another this song he just like it comes through how desperate he is in the song. Like he does sound like he's pleading. It does sound this like song. he is cheating on his wife. <laughs> not his current one, the last one. Yeah. <laughs> Previous wife, done cheated. But uh yeah, I just I love this song. It's it's a good. <laughs> it is a great song. I, I, do, I um, do. But number one is by far the best song by him, and that is "Burning It Down." We're just hanging around, burning it down, sipping on some cool Jack. Down. Just kidding. It is. Not, if you could record not, the not sounds not of my head shaking in anger. <laughs> uh, number one is why. <laughs> why? Is burning it down number one? Is the, 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 the yeah, not the song <laughs> why, which I'm gonna play right now. No, 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 two seconds ago. But why? Fuck, <laughs> why? Sometimes I wonder why. Does it-
This song, bad radio, is a song where he doesn't know why, why he they keeps forgot cheating his... on his wife. <laughs> I was going to say why they forgot his French fries. But... <laughs> that works. No, yeah, so this is a great song about how he's the, like kind of a shithead, and he, he acts like a shithead to his lady, and he doesn't know why, because he, he, he makes the realization of he ends up caring the most and, and like proving how much he cares only when she's like about to walk out the door and when he's already been a giant tool to her yeah and he's like he's like he's why contemplating I, why why well, are you the way that you yeah are? like why do i wait for you to cry before i tell you i yes. love you like why is it why am i being this piece of shit and i think like, it's just a really interesting song because it's not it's not a breakup song and it's not a love song it's just this really interesting fucking emotional dynamic that i feel is really cool and you know is captured well in the song this song was written by john rich of Big and Rich. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm amazed that he didn't, you know, throw in any sort of pelvic thrust motions into the song <laughs> writing somehow. Save a horse, ride a cowboy. Oh, Kevin, good news. He's wearing a polka dot shirt in the single album cover, too. <laughs> he really fucking doubled down on the polka dot shirts. Yeah, album one, he was all about the polka dot shirts. Um, what was going on in the world at that point where polka dot shirts were so damn popular? It was country. And he actually wore stupid shirts She's back then. She's country. Instead of white to her polka dot shirt to her polka dot boots. <laughs> country. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so that's our top ten. Honestly, I would give Jason Aldean a listen. He's If you can't stand him and everything he stands for, then I guess... Just listen to the cheating songs. They're really well done. But, like, even looking at the... (laughs) Even looking at the songs on our lists that didn't make the top ten, like, uh, You're the Love I Want to Be in, Texas Was You, Heartache That Don't Stop Hurting, On My Highway, like, those are all really good songs. And, like, it's... Yeah, I I think... And and I'm, I'm a person that loves that era you know that's the era that i really kind of started really getting into country music because of how old i was yeah and so i'm never gonna swear off these songs i'm never gonna be like yeah well fuck him you know his new music's terrible so i'm not gonna and so i can understand if you're if you're a person who didn't like music at that era and you're like well why would i listen to this like i can get it because i can get it if you swear him off but he does have a lot of good songs and that's honestly why it's so disappointing that he is as shitty as he is now. Yeah. And like, it's, it's really disappointing. Yeah, because, I mean, there are people who have hated country since Garth Brooks came into Yeah, the, exactly. Into the phrase, like, so, so. If you, yeah, if you hate Garth Brooks and, and like, all of the ni- late 90s, early 2000s country, you're obviously not going to like it because it's the same yeah. sound. Yeah. But I still think that qualifies as country, and he does have a lot of well-written songs. Yeah. Whether or not he wrote them, I don't know. Whether or not he cheated on his wife, he did. Um, I, <laughs> you know, it's the... <laughs> You never know. <laughs> um, I know from his first album, he wrote a lot of them. He wrote, uh, Big Kenny wrote a lot of his first songs. And he's just John really Rich. good friends with Big and Rich, I guess. Apparently. He wrote, Even If I Wanted To. He must have heard Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. just like, if only I could take that song <laughs> and burn it down. Yeah, John Rich wrote, a, I'm Just a Man also. He wrote, uh, Aldean wrote, You're the Love I Want to Be In. He wrote, She Loved Me. So he wrote like his best songs from his first album, which is crazy. That's impressive. Yeah, and then from his second album, he wrote none of them. Well so done. He took the step down and decided to just be like, nah, I'm done. So yeah, that's, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, he, like, even when, like we said, going through his newer albums, he even still had some hidden gems on there, and even, we were right to write most of his music off, because it's not good. Yeah, no, the, the last couple albums, if you don't listen to them at all, for you're, for sure, you're yeah, good. Like, you're good. Like I said, the one with Miranda Lambert's good to listen to, and then, um, what was the one from the other album that I like oh uh uh don't change gone i like that one because it's just no one of those of like i fucked up and i want yeah. you all this stuff's happening but it doesn't change that you're gone and yeah i like that one but